Welcome to Truthzilla. I am Megan sitting here with Scott and Ed. Today we have a very special guest. Yes, indeed, folks. We are sitting down with Etienne de la Buisi. Squared. 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 And uh, we met him a while back, um, author of this fantastic book called Government, the Biggest Scam in History. Um, so he's the founder and startup of a public policy organization called the Art of Liberty Foundation that is exposing the illegitimacy and criminality of the government and the hidden curriculum of organized crimes, mandatory government schools, scouting programs, the police military training, the pseudo religion of statism, obedience, fealty, order following, order following the tax slavery by providing students and teachers, the liberator, a viral flash drive, Dropbox, and data DVD full of liberty resources that, are, that both expose the control system and provide healthy alternatives to voluntarism, freedom, love, tolerance, agorism, counter economics, and cryptocurrencies. That is where we are at right now, folks. Welcome. So, yeah, welcome. Yes, welcome. So, where do we want to begin here? I, I, I think, you know, just the idea of, you know, government, the biggest scam in history. I think, you know, a lot of us, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Right, left, you know, whatever your political affiliation is, um, it's all starting to come down. It's all starting to come down. And I, and I think that uh, at this point, yeah. it, it, the only people that are still caught up in it are the ones that are just like still stuck in that cognitive dissonance and just like, no, I can't do it. When we heard you talk for the first time, it really shook me to the core. It really challenged Definitely. some of my core beliefs. Um, some of the things that I, I had to really take a step back and reevaluate things. Yeah. Um, it, it was a really powerful presentation. And, you know, I'm hoping that our listeners... And get a piece of that here today. So, where where do you want to begin? So, I guess I, you know, I'd start with just saying, uh, you know, I, I, obviously Etienne de la Buisi squared is a pen name, and the original Etienne de la Buisi was a French political philosopher that wrote in the 16th century, and he was really one of the first that ex that uh, exposed the little tools and the techniques that rulers used, not just to get obedience but to get fealty and adoration out of the people that they were ruling and robbing. And so the thesis of my book, uh, Government, the Biggest Scam in History Exposed, is that government was never really designed to protect life, liberty, and, and, and property as everybody was taught in their mandatory government school, right. yep. but it's really always been used to, to rob and enslave the um, the subtitle of the book is how intergenerational organized crime runs the government and the media. Mm. And so, so the thesis is, is that, that government is always illegitimate. And the reason it's always illegitimate, whether it's monarchy, whether it's uh, communism, whether it's democratic socialism, whether it's constitutional republicanism, is you can never, ever have a legitimate moral government because people cannot delegate rights that they do not have themselves to a representative or to a government to represent them doing something that they do not have the ability to do themselves so you know if i don't have the ability myself to uh to take uh megan ed and scott's money then i can't uh delegate uh, that right I don't have to a representative to take it. And if I don't have the ability to make up rules for you, then I can't delegate that, you know, to a representative. Yeah. And so if we, the people did not, you know, if the, if the, if all the powers and the rights that government claims it has to make rules and take our money did not come from we, we the people, because it's impossible for we, the people to delegate rights, they did not have themselves then, uh, you know, then where did it come from? Well, it didn't come from democracy because obviously, uh, you know, Megan and Ed can't vote to rob Scott. And that's mm -hmm. not going to be legitimate just because Megan and Ed outnumber Scott. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter if there's four people or 10 people or 250 million people voting to rob Scott. Um, you know, just because additional people, you know, vote doesn't, you can never take something that's, you know, immoral and illegitimate and make it moral just because, yeah. yeah. you know, the mob wants to, you know, wants to vote for it. And nobody can be bound by a social contract that nobody signed. So it's really, really been a scam in the beginning. And the way that I, you know, that I, that I, you know, you know, try and sum it up the best is 
you know, you got three dozen slave owners on a continent of three million people. This is the, you know, the, the, the story that we're told in the mandatory government school that, you know, a couple dozen slave owners go into a room uh, and write down on a piece of paper that they alone get to make up rules for everyone and take the wealth of others. And then uh, what they did is they just had the newspapers, the media of the time proclaim it valid and they just began operating as if it was valid. The newspapers reinforced that. You know, in the very, very beginning, not a lot of people on the continent were affected by what they were doing, you know, uh, you know, with, with the with the uh, uh, the government was doing. So a lot of people didn't care. And sure. then over time, you know, these were the moneyed interests. They're they they're you know they've got the you know the the ability to manipulate the media. And so it just became custom and people have been going along with it. But what I think is going on right now with the COVID and the lockdowns yeah. is more and more people all over the planet are yeah. figuring out that it, even if they don't realize the illegitimacy of government, they're realizing that these governments are robbing them yeah. or controlling them are, 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 you know, are, are, allowing others to make money at their benefit by giving them monopoly privileges or by you know uh, allowing banks to create the creation of money, even though through something called fractional reserve banking, mm -hmm. yep. Um, yep. which is inflationary and steals the value out of everybody else's money, which is the reason prices are rising. And so this knowledge is now spreading through society kind of at the speed of light. And yep. so now I think the powers that shouldn't be this organized crime system, which now controls the government and the media. So, I mean, it's, uh, uh, the, the name of the game with the media is control of perception. And can we get you to believe that it's legitimate that we rob and control you? And so what they're doing is they have monopolized because it's the banks at the top. They have, you know, t taken this, this, um, exorbitant privilege of creating money out of thin air and they've piled their profits into buying and consolidating the media into a small handful of companies uh, that are controlling perception so that every time you turn on the television and you twist that dial, it's legitimate that we get to rule you. It's legitimate that they 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 get to rule you. <laughs> and it's just an echo chamber of getting to rule you. And so that is the basic thesis of the book. Yeah. Yeah, it's powerful stuff. And I would argue today that, you know, with, with social media and stuff, now they have, they're using all of our data so they know how far they can push each time. So they, they push as far as they know they can. And they just keep incrementally steps, just taking more and more rights. And people are going along with it because I think they, they know what they, can, what they can get away with right now. I'm sorry. To I was going to ask if you can move the screen up. Sure. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a scary time, but I, I do think, like you said, I think people are waking up to the fact, like uh, like never before at this time. Um, um, but I, you know, I got this book when when we came up and saw you in Portland that one time, and it's a wonderful book, and I would encourage you know all of our listeners listeners to uh, to reach out and get it as well. But uh, it's also I really like that it. it's it's got so many. It's it's a picture book. Like it's it's got a lot of pictures in it. But it, but in it, what it does is it breaks down some what seems like a bigger concept into really simple simple ideas and it's you know you don't really realize when when you think about it like have i really been indoctrinated since birth into this whole system mm -hmm. and, and i think it's it, this book really simplifies and makes it it just shows it, it's just so perfect you know i mean it's from from the time you're you're in school from the time you're into you know your your boy scouts or whatever clubs you're into and to, you know i mean it's 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 a it's a plan that's worked well on the whole world, right? Like yeah. it's worked, yeah. And there's so. still there's like the same levers, the same levers of control they yeah. implement in in different societies throughout history. And you can like it, like it does a great job of like going back and tying in like okay, this is how it was done in Germany, this is how it was done in uh, you know Russia, and so it parallels like what's happening in the United or what has happened in the United States that we just attribute to you know just grand old patriotism. But it's like, dude, this is just a playbook, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll share some pa I'll share some uh, pages from the book here in a second. Sure. But yeah. I'll, what I'll just I'll just you know prep the audience with is that um, in my day job, I teach Fortune 500 companies how to learn at the speed of light, 
And most people are visual learners and they yeah. come to insight much quicker, and, you know, they, much quicker and come to a deeper insight and they have greater retention when they see information sure. than when they just hear it. And so what the book is really designed to do is to take somebody that is not familiar with this topic and take them from zero to 60 yeah. into that moment of insight that, oh my God, it's been a scam. Oh, that's how they're controlling the media by, you know, not like if you, if you tell somebody that there's six companies running hundreds and hundreds of subsidiaries to give you uh, the illusion that there's all these different media sources, you know, in society, um, they may or may not believe you, but if you show them a, a media ownership chart, which I'll show you here in just a second, all of a sudden they're like, holy crap, there's six companies running hundreds of subsidiaries <laughs> totally, to give us all the totally. illusion that we've got all this choice. Yeah. And so that really is the name of the game. It is control of perception. Yeah. And that control of the perception is six monopoly media companies on the old media side and about 25 new media companies, search engines, yep. video sharing sites, social media sites, it's Google, it's Facebook, yeah. Reddit, Twitter, discuss the content engine, Wikipedia, Snopes. Um, and what I believe is that, uh, that the, uh, the government had the, the internet way, way before anybody else had the internet. Mm, sure. And uh, I'm, a ne I'm an ex-networking guy. Um, I used to build uh, networks for Wall Street, for market data, trading floor technology. I've wor worked at global internet service providers. I've seen, and anybody can see, uh, network maps from the, from the early 1970s, Google 1974 ARPA, mm -hmm. Advanced Research Project Agency, which was Ar DARPA before it was sure. DARPA, it was ARPA. So you have to look for the ARPA <laughs> 1974 uh, you know, network map. And in 1974, they had dozens and dozens and dozens of government institutions, labs, universities on the internet connected in 1974. And so I think by the time they'd released this, you know, military network to the population, they'd already figured out exactly how they were going to control perception, exactly the companies that they needed to uh, invest in, provide unlimited capital sure. to ensure that they were able to dominate their competition to be able to control, you know, uh, to control perception, not just nationally, but internationally. And it's the government and the media working together. It's all compartmentalized. Doesn't yep. mean that everybody yep. that works for a media company yep. is in on it, but I'll show you some visualizations here in a second, showing you how small number of a uh, small handful of organizations are able to control dozens and dozens and dozens of reporters in ostensibly independent media, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, media properties. Now, um, like I said, so the book was designed really, you know, to take somebody from zero to 60. And so even if you know this, if you, even if you know this information and you've wanted to explain it to your friends and relatives and they've been leery, this is the book that will allow you to kind of take them through all of these techniques. And so the first part of the book really starts out with um, uh, 20 plus techniques that have been used by intergenerational organized crime to create the culture of slavery and tax slavery. And then I show how that manifested in each time and place. And so what I do is I'm about to expose to you the playbook of how you slave up and create tax slaves that are working over mm -hmm. half their, you know, half of their working hours for this organized crime system. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to give away, I don't want to give away the, you know, the ending, yeah. but they're sliding the population a religion. They're not calling it a religion, but they're using all the tools and the techniques of an unethically manipulative cult or a religion to slide this uh, worldview in by controlling the information you receive while you're in school, 
and in scouting, and we'll get into that in a second, but it all starts with the flag, which is the indoctrinated holy symbol. And not only so are they, are they using the flag as an indoctrinated holy symbol, uh, and they're giving it to you in the schools, but they're also product placing it into movies yep. and television shows, and they're using a technique called anchoring where they'll build the audience up to a moment of high positive emotion. And the example that I use all the time is Matt Damon in the movie, The Martian. And is he going to be able to get off of Mars? And oh no, something in wrong. He's not going to make it. No, he does make it. He's going to make it. Yes, boom. And then boom, they cut to earth and everybody's wearing American flags. And boom, they cut to mission control and there's giant American flags on the background. And what they've done is they've built you to that moment of high exhilaration and they show you the flag and they've been doing that their entire life. And that's yeah. why the NBA has the American flag on the back, on the backboard so that you associate the exhilaration of the goal with the American flag. And that's why they have uh, American flags on the players football helmets where they're, you know, forbidden to, you know, re you know, remove them and, You'll watch next time you're watching the football game. You just watch somebody and then they'll somebody in the crowd in a military uniform, and you've now they've just now anchored that moment of exhilaration, the goal to the military or to the flag or something, and they're doing that constantly. And now all of a sudden you're going to start seeing it. Um, every place in the book where you see a uh, where you see a hypertext link. You can click through and you can get video evidence or you can get further documentation. And this one little short video here shows 469 product placements of the American flag in just 12 Michael Bay movies. And what they do is they just cut out the second that it's on the, you know, the screen, the flag is on the screen in each movie as they you know roll through, you know, the Transformers and, you know, all the Michael Bay movies. And they've got a little ding going and a counter and just going ding, 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 ding. And most people wouldn't really notice it until you just, until you like link them all together. And then that technique, because human beings are really, really good pattern recognition machines. You know, once you see the pattern, you're like, hey, son of a bitch, I never realized that before, that they've been running game on me in that way. And so I'll just take you through some of the techniques and then we'll get to the the rest of the book. Um, the first technique, like I said, is the flag. The second one is having a constitution, a quote unquote, the holy documents of the constitution and the bill of rights, which I like to call the social contract that nobody signed, <laughs> but everybody's expected to be a party to. Then there is a mandatory government school employing the Prussian model of education. And for those aren't familiar, kindergarten is a Prussian word. It means a garden to grow children and in the ideology of the state and the Prussians were losing on the battlefields of Europe until uh, they began putting people into these mandatory government schools, learning the ideology of the state. And it created an army that would number one, conscript easily. And number two would literally march into cannon fire. And they're like, oh my God. And there's kind of three components. There's the statism, the hidden religion, which is the Pledge of Allegiance, the Common Prayer, the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, the government-affiliated scouting programs, the focus on the president, who's the Pope, the you know, class trips to Washington, D.C., Mecca, where the kid, kids are taken into the cathedral, the capital, and the temples. Then there's an obedience component, which is why you got to raise your hand to go to the bathroom, or raise your hand to get out of your seat, and can you just get used to, you know, yeah. getting permission from the government to do basic human functions. And then there's a debilitation program, which is the, you know, the, the values, morality and logic free, you know, curriculum. And then after the, and then after the government school system, then there are, is a youth program because there's really two different, there's two different tracks. Um, the school system is the first level of indoctrination, and that is really producing uh, a, uh, you know, a, uh, a cult member that's willing to tithe and voluntarily hand over, you know, uh, you know, half their income to the cult. But then they need to have a uh, enforcement arm. And so then the scout, the government affiliated scouting program, which is the exact same techniques that the Nazis used and the Soviets used and the East Germans used, 
that is where kids begin receiving awards, Cub Scout Adventure Loops, Boy Scout Merit Badges for learning and demonstrating their conditioning, their duties as a citizen, their reverence for and worship of the flag, pride of uniform, obedience to hierarchical command and control over conscience and basic morality, and other techniques that are ultimately going to produce what's called an order follower. And an order follower is someone that is willing to set their conscience aside and either, you know, go kill people in foreign lands and wars of occupation to steal resources, or to enforce the commandments of the cult on their friends and neighbors. So they're going to shave their head, they're going to put on a costume, a uniform, the single form conformity, and they're going to go and, uh, and, and commit violence on peaceful people in the name of the cult. Um, the youth program then gets kind of creepy as the kids get older because now we're going to militarize the kids. We're going to shave their head. We're going to segment them off from the rest of society onto military bases. This is the Explorer program and the Boy Scouts. Uh, it's young Marines. It's uh, law enforcement explorers. And so now we're going to take the kids and we're going to you know, further indoctrinate them that it's legitimate that they get to use violence on peaceful people or it's legitimate that they go abroad and murder whoever they're told in these wars of foreign occupation based on lies and manufactured evidence. And, uh, and uh, again, the same techniques, the Nazis, the Soviets, and the East Germans used. Um, then uh, there's pledges and oaths. Everybody's got them. Thousands and thousands of repetitions required in mandatory government schools and government-sponsored youth programs from a very, very early age. Then uh, all of these, these despotic regimes artificially glorify the military and the police. And like I said, every time you see a hypertext link, you can see the scholarship and the, and, the, and the research that backs up the claim, but the U.S. government has been caught paying professional sports teams over $53 million a year to include this propaganda in the stadium events. So um, this is another sign. This is one of the ways that you know the whole program is artificial and not legitimate is if it was legitimate, they wouldn't have to be paying the sports teams to do it. <laughs> You know, you're they're paying the sports teams to propagandize their audiences. Um, they all use political rallies, uh, which is kind of like a, a religious revival for the for the faithful, using a lot of the same tools and techniques that religious revivals use. And the participants frequently engage in worship of the artificially created, promoted political le leader, the savior, the pope not understanding that the organized crime system is leveraging knowledge of human psychology to exploit most but not all humans' biological desire for a leader and a father figure and inclusion in the artificially created tribe, i.e. the country. And when I say artificially created tribe, um, you know, most people that live in Portland don't have a lot in common with people that live in Oklahoma and people that live in Maine don't really have a lot in common with people that live in Alaska. And if the thing that's supposed to, you know, hold the United States together is, you know, this, this, you know, freedom and liberty. And if so, we don't have real freedom and liberty. If we've got tax slavery where 50% of everything you make is stolen and overt taxes, covert taxes and inflation, it's just another, you know, uh, it's another, you know, uh, uh, piece of evidence that the whole thing has been a scam. Mm -hmm. All of these regimes, including the U.S., mm -hmm. use propaganda. And uh, the CIA and the Department of Defense have direct involvement in over 800 major movies and 1,000 television shows, which is why Michael Bay is doing the flag placement so he can get all that military equipment for free. Uh, for the, his Transformer movies and get access to the military bases and things like that. And so uh, um, if you click through, you can see examples of, uh, you know, of these, you can get the specific films and television shows that have been getting money from the CIA and the Department of Defense. The Department of Defense actually has, a, has an office in Hollywood. They frequently have script control and uh, and then these are the movies that are being pumped to you over Netflix and uh, and Amazon Prime. 
Um, they all use manufactured news, overt or surreptitious control of publishers, editors, and reporters to create an artificial reality. And so in 1976, in congressional hearings called the Church Committee, it came out that the CIA had um, hundreds of reporters and editors on the payroll. And sometimes these, and, and this goes on today, and, and prominent politicians, uh, or sorry, pro prominent reporters have come forward and said, um, that, the, that they have written stories for the CIA or they have just put their name on stories that the CIA wrote for them mm -hmm. that they wanted to get uh, published. And so uh, this is, you know, this is going on widely. They all use manufactured terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, they all use false flags, art, uh, manufactured intelligence and lies to start war. This is, you know, uh, um, Kuwaiti babies being tossed out of incubators, the Downing Street memo, the Gulf of Tonkin, all of these are admitted to be, you know, to be known lies yeah. that then trick the population into going to war so that they could steal resources or just make money dropping bombs on brown people, uh, you know, for their military industrial complex uh, patrons and uh, supporters. Um, all of them use political assassination of rivals, whistleblowers, and dissidents. And you can click through, you know, a lot of people know the story about Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. They don't know about Thomas Bowers, who was Trump and Epstein's private banker, who supposedly committed suicide a couple mm -hmm. of weeks after Jeffrey Epstein. And so, uh, you know, I break down some of the best evidence uh, for, uh, you know, some of these, these political assassinations. Political temples dedicated to the state and the deities. So it's a religion. We're going to take the kids, generally in middle school, we're going to take them to Washington, D.C., Mecca. We're going to take them into the cathedral or the capital that looks like the Vatican for a reason. And it's going to be oversized and makes you feel small and insignificant. And then we're going to take you to the temples along the Potomac and we're going to show you the deities. And it's going to be very hush. And it's going to be very reverent. And, and you're going to be slowly and you know conditioned into this religion, not realizing that they're running game on you. Um, they all of these despotic regimes have used monopoly government money to steal the value secretly from the population. So you know we mentioned it earlier, but the government allows the banks to create money out of thin air using a technique called fractional reserve yep. banking. Yep even though that's inflationary and stealing money out of everybody's pocket through these rising prices, um, that, that ability to create money out of thin air, that's what pays for the monopolization of the media. That what pays for the ability to get their candidates elected into all these different offices. That is really the engine that allows them to control perception on a very uh, wide scale. They all spy on the citizens. That's how you know they're good people. They all use torture as policy. That's how you know they're good people. They all run secret prisons, for-profit prisons, concentration camps, and black sites. That's how you know they're good people. <laughs> and they all use conscription, manufactured enemies, and paid political violence at the rallies of their political opponents. And that's the first part of the book. And that's really just to... Again, I'm using the technique of revealing the pattern. Human beings are really, really good pattern recognition machines. And once you see the historical pattern, you're like, hey, that's a playbook. Somebody's running game mm -hmm. on me. And then the second part of the book really goes into, okay, uh, uh, I call them one pagers, but it's a deep dive uh, into a particular topic. In this case, like I said, it's a religion. If you didn't notice that the media was using religious symbolism in their propaganda, uh, most people don't because they come by one at a time. But if I stack up three dozen examples, <laughs> the human brain goes, wait a minute, that's artificial. They're doing that on purpose. I didn't notice that when they came by one at a time. But when you stack up three dozen examples and you can kind of see the pattern, 
the human beings are, you know, like I said, really good pattern recognition scenes and they, and they just kind of, they kind of get it. I'm just going to show you just a couple more and then we'll, you know, we'll go back to the discussion, but I just want to show you, you know, a couple of like the key ones. I break down what statism is, the religion of statism. Totally. I just want to just real quick on that one for the people, because yeah, we do have a bunch of people listening too. So like yeah. that, that image was just, you know, one politician after another, you know, several dozen examples of just like the halo effect, like the glowing orb behind their heads, just emanating, making them like godlike. God you complex. Know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So very powerful when you present it that way. Yep. And so the, so in this, in the religion of statism, the religion really is that government is legitimate desirable and necessary yeah. even though there's no iron law of the universe that says that you have to have a government at all yeah um what if society is a self-organizing system that produces spontaneous order and that everything the government does would be better provided by the free market yeah. by mutual aid societies by real charity and that is the that is the option that is never allowed to be discussed in the government school. That's the option that you never ever hear on television. And just think about it. I mean, there's a lot of voluntarists. I'm politically I'm a voluntarist, which means mm -hmm. I don't believe in the legitimacy, the desirability, or the necessity of having a government. And in fact, I'm exposing its illegitimacy right here. Yes. Mm -hmm. But nobody in their government school and nobody on the on the on these monopoly media platforms are ever allowed to discuss the legitimacy of government yeah. it's absolutely verboten in the schools it's absolutely verboten uh in on the television set now earlier i break down the shady history of the constitution I break down the shady history of the Pledge of Allegiance, which was a media uh, operation run by Freemasons that got the Pledge of Allegiance and the federal flag into the government schools in 1892. The company was called the Perry Mason Company. Uh, they published something called the Use Companion. This is the building uh, built in 1892 known locally still stands in Boston today. It's known as the Pledge of Allegiance building. That's the size. Imagine that building in 1892. That is the size and scope of the media operation that got people doing robotic chanting and having children pledge their allegiance to a system before they're even old enough to understand what they're pledging their allegiance to. to. This goes on today, but now it's Facebook and Twitter yeah. and, uh, and Google and, and others. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the Nazi salute, I'll just go back here in a mm -hmm. second. Uh, I know this is small, and for those, those listening, I'm showing a picture of, uh, of American school children doing what most Americans would recognize as the Nazi salute without really understanding that the Nazi salute is our salute. It was called the Bellamy Salute. Uh, it was sold to the population when, at the same time, the Pledge of Allegiance was sold to, and it was it started out as a military salute. You said, "I pledge allegiance to the flag," and you would extend your arm out, palm up, and then after a while, the kids just stuck it up like that, and something called the Roman Salute began being popularized in a 1907 movie called Ben Hur, and kids just began doing the kind of the Roman salute. The Nazis adopted it. Uh, the Nazi, uh, sorry, the Italians adopted it in 1919. The Nazi party adopted it in 1926. The German army adopted it in 1944. The United States uh, switched to the hand over the heart in 1943 on Army Day after the crimes of uh, Nazi Germany uh, became apparent. Um, and just do a couple more. Uh, I explained the hidden curriculum of the government school system. I explained the fraud of, of fractional reserve banking. Mm -hmm. Um, I explain, uh, that's awesome that you have like that. Cause that, that can be sometimes a little, uh, hard for people to understand. So the fact that you have it, like I saw the visuals, um, you know, have that concise. So if people, you know, want to kind of basically understand on a fundamental level, cause that's critical, you know, yeah, down this, certainly. this truth path. Like if you guys don't have an understanding of what fractional reserve banking is yeah. and why it's a problem and how it's an instrument of control, then like, you know, this book like breaks it down real nice. So. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, so absolutely. And that, like I said, that is the engine that allows them to monopolize the media, to buy up the politicians, to fund, uh, you know, uh, organized crime politicians, to win elections over honest po politicians with this uh, unlimited money. Mm -hmm. yep. But really, this is what I wanted to get to. The allegory I, of the cave there. Love this that. is probably allegory of the cave. And yeah. so, so, you know, what I mentioned is, you know, I mentioned this earlier, but if you go and you tell, you know, your friends and family that there are six companies running hundreds and hundreds of subsidiaries to give everybody the illusion that there's all these different, you know, uh, news um, uh, outlets in the country, uh, they may or may not believe you, but this is just a fraction of the of a media ownership chart, which you can click through, mm -hmm. you know, on this link right here and get the entire thing. Um, this is News Corp, which is Fox News, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't just own Fox News. They own 175 newspapers. They own magazines. They own Internet properties. They own book publishing companies, HarperCollins, Zondervan, Reagan Books. They own satellite networks. They own television programming. They own Fox movies, which everybody's seen, you know, Fox movies. And then this is Disney, and Disney owns periodicals, magazines, films, theme parks, you name it. Uh, they own ABC News as, yep. as an example. And, and, so, and so all of a sudden, because you see it with your own eye, then you start understanding how they're able to control perception you know, very, very widely on a global scale and how they're able to sell the COVID or the, or the bailout or the next bailout or the next war or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Now, the first one, that, that first visualization was the ownership of the media, the ownership of the physical plant and property, the printing presses, the television broadcasting you know, antennas, the satellite networks. But how do you coordinate the content of the news across dozens and dozens and dozens of ostensibly independent news entities? And so this is a visualization from 2017. It's uh, from Swiss Propaganda Research that breaks down how three organizations, the Bilderberg Group, the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission have maneuvered their members into the key publisherships, editorships, reporterships at dozens and dozens and dozens of ostensibly independent media outlets. And so for those friends of yours that, you know, that are like, well, a COVID has to be real. Not all of the media could be in on it. One, if it was fake, then one of the outlets would be telling us, no, the name of the game is we're controlling every uh, outlet. We're deceiving and distracting every audience. Yes. And this is how they're yes. doing it. By the way, these three organizations, the Bilderberg <laughs> Group, the Council on Foreign Relations, and, uh, and Trilateral Commission, Jeffrey Epstein, was a member of all three of these wow. groups. I didn't know so that. in addition to controlling perception on a very, very yes. wide scale, they're also blackmailing, uh, yep. you know, uh, uh, politicians, yep. prominent individuals, royalty, um, using what is known in Washington, D.C. as a brownstone operation where they'll get a politician or they'll get a prominent individual and they'll, uh, you know, get them drunk pop him a roofie, throw him into a room with little boys, little girls, take some pictures, and then they'll, they'll blackmail him. And if that doesn't work, they'll kill him because it's, it's at the top, it's murder incorporated organized crime, as I like to call it. I'd like to see the, I'd like to see the overlap thing. too of like, you know, how many of these people are on the Bohemian Grove list? I've, I've kind of looked at that a little bit. And then another thing to point, <laughs> to point out too is also like, uh, you know, so that's the media side, absolutely. But like the Council on Foreign Relations, that's like, you know, people in the private sector, you know, the top of the food chain there. And then also politically, right? And if you look at like, presidential cabinet, you know, I and mean, look back on all the CFR members in each presidential cabinet, it's it's overwhelming, you know. In fact, I think Trump had the most, I read, out of all recent presidents, you know what I mean? So those are the ones that really are the movers or shakers, you know. Scott, it, you nailed it, yeah. and this is so, so great segue because, so this, the next visualization is from 2011, 
And this was a, a, oh, an organization go. called the called the uh, Fund to Restore an Educated elect Electorate. And so what you're seeing here is a different visualization of the exact same three organizations, the Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderberg and the Trilateral Commission. But it's not just the media. It's the presidents. It's yeah. the vice presidents. It's the Federal Reserve System. It's the Council of Economic Advisors. It's the Central Intelligence Agency. It's the FBI. It's the 9-11 Commission. It's the Export-Import Bank. It's mm -hmm. the, the World Bank. It's the you know, special assistance to the president. It's the cabinet. It's Congress people. Like, it just keeps going down, and it keeps going to the right. If I showed you the entire thing, you wouldn't be able to read the text. <laughs> But I'll just go down some of the presidents here. We've got Obama. He was a member of Bilderberg. Mm -hmm. Clinton was a milder, member of Bilderberg, Council on Foreign Relations, and the Trilateral Commission. George Herbert Walker Bush, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral <laughs> Commission. James Earl Carter, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission. <laughs> Gerald Ford, Bilderberg, Council on Foreign Relations, and a 33-degree Mason. Mm -hmm. And so what you're seeing is going back in time decades through Republican yes. Yes. and Democratic administrations, the exact same people, the exact same organizations have been calling the shots yep. and coordinating uh, you know, every major position of power within the United States going back decades. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that are benefiting from this usurious money system these are the people that are benefiting from wars we don't need to be fighting based on lies and manufactured intelligence. These are the people that, you know, this is how they're controlling the government and the media is through this is, and also this is how this, so what I'm doing with these visualizations is I'm making something that was invisible to most people yeah. now visible yeah, totally. and I'm putting it into uh, a format where your friends and your family and your relatives can go. Yeah. I just, I didn't, I didn't understand that this was going on now because they can see it with their own eyes. They're going to come to this, you know, this deeper uh, understanding than if they, than if they, it, they, you just tried to kind of explain it to them. Um, the rest, the rest of the book, you know, um, is, you know, other visualizations explaining how they've monopolized food. And these are the food companies that are putting, you know, harmful ingredients like fluoridated water, glyphosated yeah. wheat, yeah. artificial food yeah. colorings, recombinant bovine growth hormone, uh, BPA, BPS, glutamates, refined grain, and genetically modified ingredients. These are the companies uh, uh, that have been funded with unlimited capital to consolidate their own industries. And then I've got some, you know, some independent third party testing showing the level of glyphosated wheat in some of these popular, you know, popular food products. Um, there's a debilitation program, and this has been going on for a very long time. Mm. I break down genetically modified uh, uh, GMO ingredients, and then I show, uh, you know, visualization showing how a small amount of companies, military, industrial complex companies that make yep. poisons for the military, Monsanto, Bayer, Dow, DuPont, you can't see the rest of this chart, but if you saw the rest of it, it's Dow and DuPont at the bottom have been buying up hundreds and hundreds of seed companies because they want to feed everybody genetically modified garbage to keep the to keep the slave class uh, 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 and mm -hmm. be able to control uh, food, which is uh, which is um, an old military tactic. Um, I break down control of the dictionary and explain, uh, you know, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, a voluntarist yep. yes. and a voluntarist yep. is just somebody that believes that all relationships between people should be voluntary. Yes. Nobody gets to use violence or, or uh, uh, extortion on anybody else, not even the government. The government does not get an exception on morality. And if you see people using violence and deception and extortion, that's how you know they're bad people. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, 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 you know, I break it down. The rest of the book is, uh, you know, breaks down um, some of the false flag events, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, these, these manufactured wars or some of these hoax events for gun mm -hmm. control and, 
and, you know, Department of Homeland Security, you know, measures. And then uh, we get into really what I like to call meme war. And yeah. I got some of the funniest memes in, you know, like you, like I, I've got some of the funniest memes uh, out there and everything in the book that, the, oh, oh, the a couple of things, then, then we'll open it up to questions and dialogue. Totally. But yeah, uh, sure. I like to call these, I don't know if you've ever seen these Venn diagrams, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, uh, if you didn't understand that the organized crime government and the banks, their media puppets, monopoly, co you know, corporations that are profiting from fractional reserve banking, government granted monopolies, no bid contracts, mandatory mercury and aluminum laced vaccines, war for oil and unnecessary defense spending are working together to loot the tax slaves. Well, once you take a look at these Venn diagrams and realize that there's this, you know, revolving door between all of the companies that are making billions of dollars, billions of dollars off of your tax money. Once you realize, oh, my God, they're just going in and out of government and private industry. And then you're, you're starting to, you know, you're starting to see with your own eyes, you know, how this this power structure works. And then, uh, you know, like I said, the rest of it is is me more. And so the book is designed to take your friends and relatives and to get and to bring them up to speed as fast as 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 humanly possible. Yeah, yeah, that's great. perfect, man. That's great. It's, a, it's a powerful little reference, man. Certainly. You guys certainly. have any questions? Oh, my no, I, I actually I didn't hear you speak before. So all of this is just uh, stuff to dive into. It, totally just incredible, incredible information and, and eye opening in, in a number of ways. I really, really uh, am anxious to get into the book. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's great, man. Like so we do have a hard stop here in about I'd say about 15 minutes. So we got about 15 good minutes here. And I definitely want to give you a chance to, to, to tell people where to find it. But uh, one of the things I remember you spoke about before that maybe you could, we could, that definitely ties into this is just the idea of natural law. Um, can you kind of mm -hmm. tell us about how that fits into the voluntarist philosophy? Well, I'll start off just telling you to get the book at government-scam.com, government-scam.com. There it is. And so, uh, so, so um, government is obviously immoral because um, government has rights that you don't, and they claim the ability to use violence on peaceful people for victimless crimes and not paying your taxes and, you know, your extortion or, you know, whatever it is. And so um, if we didn't have government and we didn't have government law, how would you be able to organize society? And so what we promote is something called natural law. And in natural law, there's five main transgressions. There's murder, rape, robbery, assault, and trespass. And these are obviously wrongs. Um, and they're obviously wrongs because there's a victim. Yep. And all of those, by the way, are thefts of some kind. Murder is the theft of life. Rape is the theft of sexual choice. Theft is theft. Yeah. Uh, trespass is theft of safety in your lair. And so um, so, th so because there's obviously a victim, it's, there's, those are obviously wrongs. Sure. And the word right, most people don't realize, they say, I've got a right to this, I've got a right to own a gun. Well, the word right comes from the natural law tradition, and anything that is not a wrong is a right. So as long as you're not hurting anybody else, you have the right to do whatever you want to do. You don't have to have a license to you know, uh, drive a car, you don't have to have, you know, like everything that the government says is illegal most of it isn't immoral. It's just the government writing down on a fancy piece of paper that you can't do this like a ten, like a commandment, and the and the faithful, the you know the people that have been raised in the ideology of the religion of statism, yeah. uh, and have been put through this unethically manipulative training program of mandatory government schools and and government affiliated scouting programs and. You know, uh, uh, you know, by the time they go through the program, by the time they go through the mandatory government school, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorers, JROTC, ROTC, military training, police training, mm -hmm. they can't, you can't even reason with them because they've had, they've been, you know, you can't explain to them, you know, basic uh, morality, basic logic, because they've, it's just been the, the, the indoctrination is just too much. The government's had them, 
and has been controlling the information they received. And a lot of times you, you're, you're unable to, to reason with them. And this is the why, this is why you can't reason with them and why they can't do it because this program was designed in Prussia to create this level of obedience mm -hmm. and subservience. And so, uh, so uh, what we're, what we're advocating is, is, you know, a peaceful and orderly dissolution of the U S government. Uh, let's go ahead and roll it back. Um, let's, uh, you know, um, uh, move to voluntary consensual relationships between free people. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be police, but it's not going to be government monopoly police. It's going to be private security companies, ADT and West tech. And they're going, you know, they're, you'll probably pay 50 bucks a month and it'll come with an alarm system. And when you call and somebody's breaking into your house, you know, and a guy with a gun will show up to protect you. But this guy is not going to think that he has rights that other people don't. He's not going to arrest you for smoking a plant. Or if he finds that you're in the middle of a poker game, he's not going to arrest you for the poker game. And, and uh, you know, while the government doesn't teach it in its mandatory government schools, almost every single thing that the government does would better be provided from roads to air traffic control would better be provided by the free market, mutual aid societies or private charities. Air traffic control Canada has already privatized their air traffic control system and planes aren't falling out of the sky in Canada. <laughs> yeah. You know, everything the government does could better be per could better be performed by the free market. And that really is the big secret that's been hidden from society. The world is a self-organizing system. It produces something called spontaneous order and everything the government does, you know, could be done without the violence and extortion of the government. Sure. Absolutely, sure. man. Sure. Uh, I think it also, so, you know, uh, it speaks to a lot of what we talk about a lot here on this show. It's like, so this, what is the solution? Like we have to not acquiesce. Like the second we all sure. collectively stop acquiescing yeah. and yep. stop participating in our own slavery, it all ends. It could all end immediately, like right now, tomorrow. It could all be over, yep. you sure. know? Um, and, and you know, so the original Etienne de la Boisi kind of came on my radar a, a while back. You know, his book, The Politics of Obedience, is such a, it, it speaks to that so well. You know, one of my favorite quotes of all time, you know, it talks about, it talks about this specifically. It says like, you know, there's a quote here. I can't remember. I don't know what page it's on, but I've always re had, uh, re referenced back to this. It says, two, possibly ten men may fear one. But when a thousand, a million men, a thousand cities fail to protect themselves against the domination of one man, this cannot be called cowardly, for cowardice does not sink to such a depth. Um, it says, what monstrous vice, then, is this which does not even deserve to be called cowardice, a vice for which no term can be found vile enough, which nature herself disavows our tongues and our tongues refuse to name. Like we don't have a, even have a word in our vocabulary strong enough to label how cowardly we are for putting up with this bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Yeah. 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 For so, sure. For sure. Man. Uh, so you, you nailed it. So the, the difference between a free man and a slave is that slaves can't say no. Yeah. And so when you want to quit being a slave, then you've got to step up and say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put up with this and begin to extricate yourself from the system, begin to throw sand in the gears every chance you get. Mm -hmm. You know, every chance, every conversation I have with a taxi driver or an Uber driver, I you know tell them about the fraudulent of the government. Every time I do a transaction with my you know local merchant, I'll give them cash and I'll say, I'm giving you cash so you don't have to to share it with the lying, thieving, stealing government, you know, every chance you get throw you know, sand into the, into the gears. I make the, uh, I make the book available for free at government hyphen scam.com. And if you go to government dash scam.com, not only will you find the book, but I back up everything in the book with a credit card size flash drive that we call the liberator. Mm. And, uh, that, that has the copy of the book with the hypertext links, uh, so that you can get that. But not only does it have the book, but it's got, you know, eight or depending on which one you buy, it's got eight or 16 gig of information, um, backing up the book and exposing the scam of uh, the criminality of the government. And so, uh, 
once you have a liberator, then anybody can make more liberators. So I keep it to eight gig so that you can burn it onto a DVD. And then we actually give you the labels that you can print out on readily available wow. Avery, you know, nice. DVD labels, or you can, you can, you know, buy uh, 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 flash drives in bulk and you can just, you know, pass them along to your friends and relatives. And uh, it's got everything from documentaries, PDFs, uh, this is what's being hidden from you on Facebook. This is what's yeah. being hidden from you by Google. This is the evidence of government criminality that exposes the whole system. Yeah. And yeah. even if they censor us on the internet, we can sneaker net this information mm. to our friends and our family. And knowledge really is power. And once you realize that it's all illegitimate, and once you realize that the that the uh, that that government itself is illegitimate, and the, and that there is a man behind the curtain yeah. in the That's media right. and in social media, Facebook, yep. Google, Twitter. Once you realize that, you know, once you understand how the magician does the trick, it's very very hard to be fooled by the magician when you understand how he does the trick and that's how he's doing the trick. They're controlling perception on a very, very wide scale. You've been born into the system and just like Neo in the matrix, you know, knowledge is the thing that is going to, is going to allow you to pull yourself out and, uh, and, and claim that the freedom and the liberty that is your birthright as, as not as an American, but as a human being on this thing. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be, you're, you know, I'm not an American. I'm just a human being that was born in this country. Sure. Just because you're born in Compton doesn't mean you have to be a Crip. Just because you're born in East LA doesn't mean you have to be a blood. Um, uh, be, you know, don't be fooled into going along with the system yeah. because they yeah. taught you that it was legitimate in their mandatory government school and reinforced it with six monopoly companies running hundreds and hundreds of subsidiaries to give you the illusion that, you know, you don't have a choice, that you've got to go along with it, that everybody believes in it, and that this is the way that the planet has to be structured because it doesn't. And yeah. society yeah. is quickly, you know, coming to that realization, which is why they're trying to lock us down, yep. which is why they're waging economic warfare yep. against independent businesses. Um, don't do business with these monopoly companies, mm -hmm. spend your money with local uh, merchants, uh, you know, uh, uh, voting with your dollars is your strongest weapon. Like I said, you can get more information, government-scam.com. Awesome, guys. Awesome. Well, awesome. Yeah, so Thank everybody, you so much. please go check out government-scam.com. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Wow. wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Ah, we're going to have to do this again. Um, I feel like there's even more to get into. Um, I know. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, for sure, man. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you, Howard. We for appreciate sure. you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you guys for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Heck, yeah. We'll catch yeah. you soon. We'll stay in touch. Yeah. We'll stay in touch. Yeah, we, we want to do a gong bath with Tamara again, too. Oh, yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, have a good night. Yeah. Okay. We All thank right. you very much. Bye. Ooh, holy crap, you guys. So I hope you dive into government-scam.com. Get some more of this. This is badass stuff. Yeah, man. Um, he, is, he is just a wealth of information. And, you know, when we saw his presentation yeah, yeah. before, I was just floored. But, I saw, you know, it's I'm kind of re-floored. I am floored. Floored. floored for the first time. Re-floored. I'm definitely, I didn't quite understand, but I don't understand like, like the technology okay. behind the little flash drive things. Like when yeah. he was talking about sharing it with people, but I know that I want to do that. So yeah, we're, you're, we're, you'll we're help that. me. Yeah, okay. totally, totally. But anyways. Um, so you guys, please, please, please come join us on Rockfin, rockfin.com forward yes. slash Truezilla. Um, you can create a free account. You know, you I, I would encourage you, instead of watching us on YouTube, watch us on rockfin.com. You know, please we actually do. get cryptocurrency just by your clicks. You know, we get kickback. So it's like if you want to support the show, you don't even have to do the monthly subscription thing. You know, it is 10 bucks a month. You get access to all the premium content of every single content creator on the whole site, including our little Truezilla Reconciliation Commission episodes. Uh, but yeah, but if nothing else, just go create an account and tell them Truezilla sent you and just, just click away. And plus rock. Rockfin has yeah. like all of our favorite people yeah. on there, and I'm sure all your favorite people too. You're gonna see your Jason Burmis and yeah. your your Sam Tripoli's and Whitney your Webb. uh, Whitney Webb's, Jimmy your uh, Last American Vagabond. You're gonna see Ricky uh, Brandis. Slow, yes. Slow News. Yeah, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky got on there. Ricky Heck Brandis, yeah. uh, yeah. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie's Robinson. on there. Yes, like all all Jamie all Deluxe, the people dude. that Jamie we Deluxe. love are yes. on there for sure. So big shout so out please to Jamie come Deluxe. on over there and and you know and stick with the cool crowd.
Yeah. <laughs> Stick with the cool crowd. I yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, sure, sure. yeah, and uh, you can get your, oh, if you guys watch the new little documentary we dropped, you can get your own World Hell Organization shirt right out of yes. the documentary. Over oh, yeah. truezilla.org Truzilla. forward slash shirts. shirts. Woo. Yeah. Um, we didn't coordinate that or anything. That was pretty good. That, that was pretty spontaneous. Kinda, yeah, we kind of Maybe we'll do that with our but... t-shirts now the next time that we got that one down. And take good pictures of them. Send them to us. But, but speaking yeah, yeah, yeah. of, the, please watch this documentary. It, it's freaking, like, it's, it's not for the faint of heart, but it is... Powerful. It is, it is very powerful, yes. and I think it's really uh, paints a picture of where we're really at right now. Yeah, it's Absolutely, called, and, it's called the ten stages yeah. of genocide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, history repeating. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, please watch it. Please share it. Please, yeah. please watch it and share it. Yep, on rockfin.com. Anyway. <laughs> com. All right. Well, everybody, that was Etienne de la Buisi. Squared. Squared. Yes. Uh, please go and find this book at uh, government dash scam dot com yep. i am megan sitting here with my dear friends scott and ed we wish all of you intellectual prosperity good night pew, 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 pew. Ping. <laughs>